webinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Testing one, two, three. Hi there, guys. For you guys who are already in the room waiting, um, kindly give us another five minutes or so. We're just uh, awaiting more um, who have actually just, uh, just um, what do you call that, informed me that they are on their way into uh, logging into the room. So uh, we'll just wait a little bit. If you guys can hear me loud and clear, please let me know. And uh, also, I've shown the uh, presentation slides of FP Markets, if you can see that clearly as well as hear my voice. Kindly just confirm that. Thank you. Hi there. Hi there. Okay, so you can, uh, hi there, Eugene, Fidel, you guys can actually, uh, you guys can hear me loud and clear as well as see my uh, screen for the uh, presentation slides. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, kindly just wait, perhaps in about five minutes or so we'll start, okay? Um, and if you've got any questions, you know, meantime for the previous um uh, what do you call that course as well? Just you know, simply jot it down or uh, send it through the chat. I'll be happy to help. Uh, we'll leave all questions, uh, you know, at the very end, but we can always, you know, come back to them while waiting. All right, no problems at all. Okay, we'll show you guys the uh, charts as well as we get uh, along, uh, get on the um, uh, part three of the course uh, this time around, and it's uh, going to be touching on. The, fundamental aspects, uh, fundamental analysis as well, before we combine everything in the next course. Okay, guys. All right, so give you guys about four minutes plus, okay, um, and I'll be back. All right, I'll just mute you guys for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you. Hi there, guys. Hope you guys can hear me loud and clear and see my screen as well. I think we can start and get going. I'll be um, having my I'm having my uh, FP Markets uh, presentation slides just to confirm you guys can hear me loud and clear as well as see my screen. And we shall then start. I'm just going to uh, make sure that I've got this recorded as well and showing you my FP Markets presentation slide. Okay, guys, I think uh, you guys can hear me loud and clear, so let's uh, get started. Uh, firstly and foremost, I'd like to welcome you guys. Uh, thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Today is the part three of the course, and uh, today is the 19th of April, 2018. So welcome to part three, and uh, thank you for uh, staying along uh, all throughout part one and two, and now part three, before we end it with part four next week, uh, same time on Thursday. Okay, so uh, here, for example, we are um, going to be uh, covering fundamental analysis as we have actually covered technical analysis uh, the last time around, uh, the last course, uh, which is part two. And uh, what we will do in part four is to put everything together and uh, make up a sort of short strategy in practically applying a trade plan as well, all the first steps, uh, you know, of uh, uh, setting up your trades, uh, looking for the right pairs and everything else that we've actually covered from part one, we'll cover it all step by step, making it out a trade plan part four next week. So today's webinar, we'll be talking about fundamental analysis, but just before that, I'll just, I'll go over the uh, risk warning, but don't worry, it's just the first, um, first paragraph right there, and then we can get going to the syllabus of the course, okay? So um, all financial instruments, including Forex or currency trading, all have large potential rewards, but they also have large potential risks. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to, to accept them in order to invest in these markets. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose, and so on with more information right there to take your time in reading them through. Thank you very much for that, and uh, the slide, next slide right there. Let's just carry on with that. So I've got my presentation slide there on fundamental analysis. Uh, it will be a, a very interesting um, topic to cover, mainly because we've just got overload of information on fundamental analysis. I do apologize for the black screen. You are seeing the black screen at this moment, but just give it a bit, uh, a minute or two for it to actually pop up. I'm not sure why, but just give me a second. There you go. 
Um, I was trying to enlarge that whole screen of mine. So here you go. You've got the fundamental analysis uh, right there. Um, we have got um, quite a number of newbies. They tend to get um, a little confused with what fundamental analysis or news trading and trading with the news and whether or not they've been applying uh, strategies concerning fundamental analysis or not. Um, previous talks, uh, Infidel, you have, uh, you could uh, easily, I'll provide you with the contact details uh, of FP Markets. They have got all of it in their um, archive, so you can actually request uh, from FP Markets. Okay, so it's info uh, at uh, fpmarkets.com. Okay, you can easily do that. Just email and uh, you'll be able to uh, get them to advise you on how to go ahead with getting all the previous webinars, recorded webinars. Okay, all right. So uh, there we go. We've got fundamental analysis. I mean, most traders, I mean, in the practical world or real world of trading, uh, we don't really go on to... Um, onto the uh, economic calendar, let's say, and uh, look into the results of the economic calendar. I'll show you what the economic calendar looks like for those of you guys who are actually new. Um, but, you know, there's a bit of a misconception that when we look into economic calendar and we'll look into results, that's basically applying fundamental analysis. Now, fundamental analysis has got quite a wide range of topics that needs to be covered as well, and it needs a better understanding on how do you apply practically fundamental analysis. But before before that, I want to go into uh, making you understand or help you understand uh, a little bit more about what um, fundamental analysis entails. Okay, so here as we look into it, um, we have got um, the stock side of it. Let's say stocks, trainings, equities, trainings, all other financial instruments. Forex is the biggest financial instruments and uh, instrument. So uh, what it does actually entail in other parts of uh, financial uh, or fundamental analysis is it does actually include company analysis, future profit outlook, as you can actually see here, economic conditions, various others. Now, when we come into forex trading, most forex traders they uh, you know sort of focus right into the fundamental um, the fundamentals of economic data, like for example the economic uh, data on the GDP, um, inflation rates, and various others, and they look into the results and um, and think that if the results are positive then they could actually enter a buy and then sell and that that's basically a very very risky move to actually trade that way based on the results because lately um, especially lately uh, you've got loads of um, what you call that mismatch between results that are positive and then the market actually turn around uh, you know and, and come down instead and, and various vice versa so we uh, it's probably best not for us to rely on on just the economic calendar. So this is what the course is about, to give you an insight of what you would need to do practically to um, apply fundamental analysis. Okay, so let's get going with that. Um, here, for example, we have got various, uh, definitely various new topics that needs to be considered and could easily be categorized under the fundamental uh, analysis, uh, what do you call it, elements. Okay, so of course we've got political events, for example, uh, that can actually move the market. So anything that's out of the chart, out of chart analysis or technical analysis could be easily considered coming under the category of fundamental analysis. And fundamental analysis could also include news as well. Uh, for example, like what you see here, you've got geopolitical events, breaking news. So whatever that you've uh, heard about Trump policies, for example, uh, his um, you know, current relationship or communications uh, with North Korea, with Syria, what's going on live now as we actually hear the news as well, could easily be catalyst catalyst to actually move the market too. So that could be another category uh, that comes under breaking news, for example. Then we've got the global economy. Global economy does actually uh, also look into various countries, you know, their relationship with one country and another, for example, uh, giving it more uh, trading opportunities, you know, like physical trading opportunities between them. So uh, their correlation uh, of the currency could also be quite correlated, whether positively or or negatively correlated, for example, you see. So it's really important for us to um, also understand that uh, when we have got, uh, I'll give you examples of these kind of analysis. Uh, for example, you've got a very strong uh, bilateral trade agreement or relationship between China and Australia. So uh, Australia is one of the, uh, you know, uh, the country that 
exports its minerals and its raw products uh, to China. So China is one of its biggest um, importer of Australian raw materials. Okay, so what happens is all these raw materials goes into China, gets made, and then China sells them uh, back to Australia. So Australia is uh, the exporter as well as major importer for China. So that does actually then reflect the correlation between these two countries in terms of their currencies, uh, currency movements as well, which uh, could actually be termed as positive positively correlated so there you go you've got that global economic um, you know situation there going on and various other countries as well for examples uh, of various countries tied up together um, <laughs> that's brilliant okay that's great so here you go so you've got all these things going on and these are areas that we uh, sort of as traders as really practical uh, traders realistic traders we need to be really aware of these things I'm not saying that you need to always watch the news and you know be in front of the TV or you know keep reading and everything else it's just a matter of being alert and uh, it's also part of um, you know applying micro learning that means you know little little bits of information that may actually be important for you to uh, take it and apply and look at the technical aspects of things to confirm so this is what we're going to be covering next week as well how you can actually put things together into a sort of practical trade plan so that it becomes a trade setup before you actually decide to click onto the buy or the sell button okay so here is just a matter of understanding that uh, a lot of things uh, you know many other factors could actually be categorized under fundamental analysis oh, also you've got act of God that actually mean natural disasters you've got tsunami you've got hurricanes you know you've got uh, storms or various others and if it actually does um, you know impact the country's operations especially uh, you know various industries including the financial industries the stock market the stock exchange market and you've got people not able to move get trapped in places not able to go to work uh, you know and, and various other accidents and uh, you know um, things that actually happen could then impact the country's operation in general and that does actually then um, create you know chaos and that chaos could then create a lot of fear and that fear then would create more selling opportunities in the forex market okay so this is basically how uh, it all sort of uh, connected and, and relate so then you've got your political events of course you know um, inflation rates interest rate decisions so interest rate decisions are uh, inflation is connected to the CPI for example and then you've got employment figures uh, that does actually connect again with that so uh, what I would like to uh, show you today is a diagram that gives you an idea of what connects to what and that is important for us to know because nowadays for example you've got a little bit too much information that has been actually repeated over and over again and it's mostly theoretical as opposed to practical so uh, when we uh, hear about or read about NFP let's say it stands for um, non-farm payroll so non-farm payroll for example is is it's all of, all over the materials in in forex training and forex uh, education but then you know it's uh, it's been misconstrued a lot uh, whereby people are uh, thinking that that's the way that we can actually make a lot of money really really fast by just uh, you know knowing the figures of the non-farm payroll uh, and and enter the market and that's actually Perhaps it's one of the ways or strategies that many actually apply, but uh, it could, if, if that's just the only way without actually having a balance type approach, then that could actually increase your risk and, and actually decrease your probability of success. Okay, so we want to understand what um, economic data could potentially connect with uh, other economic data, you, you see. So um, let me just give you an idea. Let's just go through that. Now, um, I'm just going to be there. Okay. Now, for example, like in, in this diagram here, you have got your inflation, your interest rate decisions, for example. And we have got employment data, just to give you a bit of an idea, because that, that is one of the most uh, traded and most popular uh, economic data amongst scalpers or short-term traders, especially, is the NFP, and that's the non-farm payroll. So the non-farm payroll, I'll just give you a little bit of a hint. Uh, before the non-farm payroll uh, comes out or gets, um, gets announced, now it gets announced usually every first Friday of every month okay every first Friday of the new month and once that gets uh, you know 
um, announce, then you've got all the figures that you can actually then see it uh, on the economic calendar. And I'll just go over to the economic calendar for you. Just give me a second. Now that's how the economic calendar looks like, and you've got various economic calendar um, in uh, Forex Factory, you've got in FX Street and various others. Now, one of the most important thing for you to understand is to actually filter uh, for the day. Let's say, for example, today is Thursday. Now, uh, in FX Street, for example, there's, there's no one perfect way of looking into the economic calendar. You can easily go to fpmarkets.com if they've got tools there that could actually give you the feeds of economic calendar. You can easily use that too. Okay, and uh, what you want to be doing is to filter that uh, all these areas here to actually indicate only high impact and uh, medium impact ones. It's not really necessary for us to have all of the news, you know, coming out. And what I usually pay attention to is just this column here where I can actually see whether it's high impact news, which is, you know, it's represented by the red bar right there. And then you've got half yellow bar right there that indicates uh, that data to be medium uh, of medium impact okay but that's the column that i see um and usually traders they're actually sort of educated to straight away look into the results right there uh, as opposed to the uh, the consensus right there so if it is a negative right there you know they, they'll go ahead and and look into selling opportunities and that is a a sort of setup but it is highly risky so what i i would uh, like to share with you guys is just to look into um you know to filter it but then to have more of a focus on what if what currencies could actually be impacted for the day uh, to create volatility in the market and that's actually more than enough for you to understand which pairs uh, could actually be uh, best to actually pick for the day as well. So here, for example, if we have got, let's say today's Thursday, April 19th, and we have got all these two rate bars here, and these two rate bars uh, represents high impact uh, data uh, release for the Australian uh, economy. So that Australian economy would then impact the Australian dollar, obviously. And here, these are unemployment and employment figures. Now, I, you, I mean, for quite a number of years now, I've not actually paid uh, any attention to all the results and every numbers that I see, what I'm most concerned about is to look at uh, how heavy the docket of economic calendar would be for that particular country or that currency. Okay, because that's more than enough to actually sort of tell you where the party is for the day. Okay, so here, for example, where the party is for the day could then revolve around the AUD here, for example, a list of GBP data as well as a list of USD data. So then you've got an idea that uh, there are potential movement or volatility. We don't actually know how high volatility and all that as yet, but we know that we have got um, movements of AUD, or GBP, or USD to actually expect. And that is good enough for us to then uh, trust our eyes and do all relevant steps onto the charts and look at various other tools to actually confirm our decision before we actually execute a buy or a sell. So here would actually then be increasing your probability of choosing firstly the right pair in the market or the right currency to actually attach it with other currency that would be worthwhile for you to um, uh, combine them as a pair, you see? So this is why we it's really important for us to filter them to medium and high impact and get a bit of an idea. So here, for example, we have got uh, on Thursday, April the 19th, we have got uh, possible uh, movements with especially AUD, the GBP and the USD, but uh, perhaps more movement or even more volatility could actually be expected with the AUD mainly due to it's um, what you call it, it's, um, it's high impact news. And here we have got the data release here. I, I very seldom, as I've mentioned, uh, look into the numbers right here, but here it indicates um, a negative sort of number with regards to its employment change. And if you want to find out, you know, what does it actually mean? You know, it's very easy to just click onto it and you've got the information right there, uh, which is concerning the change in the number of employed people in Australia. So generally speaking, as it says here, a rise in the indicator has positive implications for consumer spending, which stimulates economic growth, okay? So therefore, a high reading is seen as positive or bullish 
for the AUD. So here itself, you know, you have got all that going on at the moment. So we will then check uh, on AUD later on. I've got a question on AUD JPY, for example, earlier on. Now we want to also look at how, uh, you know, the breakup of AUD or Australian economy and the Japanese economy, are they actually things we need to look at, you know, and, and to understand a little bit more. Um, they, it's not necessary to read a you know too much on the day itself because you you just lose opportunities as well so we want to know uh, and understand how to manage our time as well when we actually find out all this information and practically apply okay so there you go you've got that indication right there so the summary of what i've just showed you is to focus on you know which currencies are of impact whether it's medium impact data releases or the high impact data releases okay so it's not really necessary there but then just looking at that itself and browse through that you will see that there's a negative impact uh, on to the data we don't actually know uh, as yet uh, whether it's going to be definitely negative impact meaning selling the AUD or buying an AUD we have not done the necessary steps as yet this is just a hint at the moment to know that AUD would probably be uh, one of the currency that we could potentially choose for today because it's been impacted by its economic data releases today okay so that's basically it. okay I think I've got some questions here let's go into it um, Yes, hi there, Infidolfo. AUD JPY. Um, yes, we can actually confirm that again. You can always, you know, uh, combine what we've learned on step uh, on part one, part two, uh, as well to look into um, various other hints onto the chart. You know, we can always apply uh, on the technical side of it. I mean, like now, for example, you have got a point and you're partially right by saying that. Uh, okay, it's got a negative impact on there because of the uh, data release figure, uh, the number. But uh, this does not actually happen 100% of the time. What that actually means is that um, there, there are times whereby if it's negative and then the opposite happens and vice versa. And this is why we uh, it's probably best for us not to rely only on one source of information, like in this case, the data, the economic data itself, to actually make that decision to short or not. So what we can actually do from what you've understood the market now uh, with regards to AUD JPY, for example, is that uh, we have got that negative indicator uh, through the economic data, that's great. What we want to actually do now is when we go onto our chart, we want to compare at least three time frames. If you guys actually remember that we've actually covered uh, on how to actually analyze trend on three time frames based on your um, exponential moving averages, the 50, the 100, as well as the 200. So what we can then do is we can use the AUD JPY uh, to actually have a, as a sample case study now. And what we can then do is we've gone on to the economic calendar. I'll show you in a bit um, before we go on to the charts to see what can we actually revise from part two on the technical aspects on, on marrying what we see on economic data with what we can actually see in terms of trend and various others onto your chart. Okay, so I want to combine your technical and fundamental as well today. All right, good. That's great. I think it's a, it's a quite a nice um, pair to actually look at uh, today as well. Um, let me just also give you a little bit of a um, hint in terms of pairs that are chosen today, um, especially based on top movers. Now, the top movers is, uh, you know, not my favorite, but I, it is one of the tools that I actually use just to give me a bit of an idea of which pair would probably be best or which currency is giving you hints on the upside or downside uh, following what the majority of traders are actually doing. Now here, for example, this has this has been covered as well uh, in one of the courses, I think it was in part uh, one itself. So we will then revise and make all the ingredients to actually combine uh, very soon, uh, which is for next week's uh, part four. So here, for example, we have got all these currencies right here. I'm not sure where the sounds are coming from, um, but okay. So we have got all that um, uh, GBP versus the NZD, the NZD right there. We've got some more GBP. 
Um, and you can see that the first one here, GBP and ZD, you've got majority of people or traders are paying more attention to the buy side since it's on the positive side right there. But this is not something that we could just follow right through with just one piece of information and then go straight onto your chart, uh, onto your platform and start um, uh, transacting the orders. So this would be very risky to do so. So what we can then see here is we have got all that um, We've got some JPY as well in focus, but then if we if we look at GBP JPY on the third um, you know uh, row right there, it's also having a, a positive um, a positive uh, what do you call that a symbol there on the GBP. So that actually means that you know majority could potentially be buying the GBP but selling the JPY. And what about the fourth one here? We have got plus again for the CAD. So then it's it's selling for the JPY. And this one here plus for the AUD. So selling for the JPY plus for the CHF, which is your Swiss franc, and then selling for your JPY again. So this is giving you a bit of a pattern of what could potentially be out there in the market where majority of the bias is on the sell for the JPY. So if it's on the sell on the JPY, then if you combine your majority sell for the JPY with your AUD, what that can actually mean is that if there is a depreciation in the JPY, then you are looking into more appreciation of the AUD. Okay, so the appreciation of AUD, meaning that if you're combining AUD and JPY right here, uh, we want to confirm whether or not that is still true for now, because whatever that you're looking at now could easily be uh, for probably some time ago. And, you know, now, for example, in Australia, it's nighttime. So if it's nighttime and Australia is the least active time of trading and everything else, so a lot of things would actually be slowing down now in Australia. OK, as well as the uh, the, the uh, in Japan. So if it's slowing down in Japan, whatever that you are looking at now could easily be not the case as well. So how do we actually confirm that? What we know is that, yes, AUD JPY is one of the pairs that are in focus uh, by majority of traders and investors, okay, for various reasons. They may be shorting it, they may be, um, you know, buying it. We don't actually know, but for us, what do we actually do is we go onto the chart to confirm the trend. So that's basically what's very, very important for us to do, okay? So here, uh, we can then go on next to FP Markets platform right there and we have got AUD JPY right here. Now it's a bit of a revision for you guys as well in terms of the technical um, aspects or technical analysis uh, elements of it is to apply your three exponential moving average and compare at least three time frames to do a trend analysis. When we say trend analysis, we're just paying a lot of attention to look at synchronicity, to look at matching of three time frames to give you the hint that it is definitely on an upside or it is, you know, uh, on the downside. But uh, again, it's actually a big, big difference between a strong trend and a trend that is getting stronger. Whatever that you're looking at, a strong trend up now could easily be weakening, especially if um, you know the market in these countries are actually winding down. It's at night, and then they're preparing, you know, for the for the next day, and everything is sort of slow down for the day. So this is where where we need to trust our eyes on the technical side of it, combining what we've learned in part two last week. And here, a bit of a revision here. Let's say we are starting off with AUD JPY as a sample uh, analysis at this moment of time, and we want to actually find out whether or not the candle are above all three lines or under all three lines in three time frames and we want to look at whether or not there are matches so once you've actually got that matched up then you've got a better idea on the trend and once you've got a better idea on the trend you are able to then uh, you know do the the other actions of whether it is spotting the patterns, drawing out the patterns and various others, okay? Or even uh, looking into support resistance zones as well. So here, for example, we have got that candle, uh, as you guys can see, coming downwards, right? And these candles that, uh, this this particular candle, bearish candle that's coming downwards, uh, could easily find a reversal very, very soon. The reason why I say that is because you've got these three lines here. You see all these three colorful lines? They represent, the first one here represent the 50 exponential moving average. So it's not the simple moving average, but it's exponential moving average. So I've got the 50, the 100, and the 200. So I've got the 50 right here. 100 here and the purple one is my 200 exponential moving average now the reason why i've said what i've said about um 
a potential reversal is mainly due to uh, two reasons. Number one is price action itself. You remember if we've actually covered that uh, when you're actually looking at the trend or analyzing the pair, it's exactly like crossing a really busy highway. You need to look to the right and you need to look to the left. Um, and you look to the right basically to look at the current price right here. The current price is sitting at 83.5253 uh, and it is just too close to the 83.50 psychological number. Hence the reason you could see that uh, you've got the body weakening and it's leaving out uh, the, the the wick of the candle uh, right there. So it, it's it's on thinking thinking mode. But why has it actually not just continued to to fall and create a very long body? Mainly because it's got a reason to do so. So uh, one of the reasons why you look to the right, you're looking at the price at 83.53, which I've mentioned, and it's closest to the 83.50 psychological number. We've covered psychological numbers as well. So here, psychology not a psychological number as well is a really really a, a big um, reason for you to apply the use of psychological numbers mainly for your exits and entries that actually means that you are buying or selling as well as exiting at the right price so the right price has got to do with price action itself and we want to actually be not entering or entering the market whether it's a buy or sell or even exiting the market exactly at the four psychological numbers based on the last two digits for example the price now is 83.51 uh, 0.51 is the is the two digits that i'm looking at now 51 52 it's close to the 50 psychological number you have got four sets of psychological numbers you've got the 00 the 50 the 20 as well as the 80 so you can write it down i'll repeat that again you've got four sets of psychological numbers they are 00 20 50 and 80 okay this is based on the two digits after the decimal point this is for the AUD JPY if it is your um, let's say euro USD um, you're just looking at four digits after the um, decimal point and look at the last two digits of the four decimal places so 1.2377 or 78 the 78 would be the number that you're looking at so if it's 78 78 is closest to 80 Never buy, sell, or exit exactly or on the dot of any psychological number, whether it's 00, 20, 50, or 80. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you guys, but you guys can always join me on a live market trading every Tuesday uh, for FP Markets, and that could then uh, be giving you live uh, analysis on how you can actually analyze the market and their access with the use of um practical use of psychological numbers as well okay um let's see we've got a couple of questions coming up right here um infidel you've got the question on uh volume uh on the graph now uh it does actually depend on the strategy as well i mean if the volume are used by yourself uh, as you know it's really difficult to have volume in the forex market Okay, it, it is the biggest financial market with too heavy and, you know, it's not that easy to actually uh, have an accurate representation of volume in the Forex industry or Forex trading. So it does actually depend on how you're using that, that volume uh, graph um, and, and what is it actually for, I mean, for, for yourself. Is it to indicate um, divergence or does it actually indicate reversal for you? You know, it does actually depend. I mean, with myself uh, trading with patterns, um, it's not really necessary for the volume side of it. They may, it may be necessary in different elements of it, but for the application of geometric patterns and various other style I'm using, it's not really um, something that I actually use. Uh, similarly, I'm not actually using the um, exponential moving averages as well for crossing entries and all that as well because uh, for me i'm solely using the exponential moving average as your trend indicator because that's what it is a, a trend indicator the ema or, or moving averages whether exponential weighted or simple 
they are all just trend indicators and they're lagging indicators at the end of the day so hence the reason um yes that's brilliant i mean if if it fits your your uh, uh technique or approach or setup then it's great you know you can always combine it with a little bit of geometric patterns as well and then see whether or not they could actually marry up to sharpen your existing uh trades uh, or your your existing trade setup or techniques okay um, hi there, Moses. No worries. Uh, welcome. Welcome to today's webinar. It's part three, um, and we're, we've covered a bit of uh, fundamentals, you know, fundamental analysis. Now we're just matting that up to the technical aspects of things. Okay. All right. Uh, it's probably best, Moses, for you to uh, have an email sent to request to FP Markets, so you could easily uh, email info at fpmarkets.com, or you can also email it to me at Kenny at um, fxgeometry.com okay feel free all right uh this is quite a nice thing in fiddle that you've mentioned about a cup and handle i like patterns a lot yes uh on the aud jpy possible on the hourly let's let's look at it uh together that's not a problem uh, but before that, I just want to complete the trend analysis for AUDJPY first. Uh, we have got on the one hour chart, based on the three exponential moving averages right there, you have got the 50, the 100, and the 200. You've got candles basically here coming downwards. And usually what, what could easily happen is for uh, candles and prices to find reversal at any one of these uh, exponential moving averages. As you can see here, for example, you've got candles, uh, you know, just just started falling down like waterfall right here you've got a depreciation of price and then it sort of found a bit of support right there really close to the um, 50 exponential uh, average and then when it started to fall again as you can see you've got some support right there as well so you can always take a look at how um, prices or candles does actually respect uh, to some extent the exponential moving averages okay either the um, 50 the 100 or the 200 so hence the reason i've mentioned earlier on that here it may actually find a bit of a support at either one of these exponential moving averages as well uh, but what we want to do is to to find out whether or not uh, it is an uptrend or a downtrend based on the position of the candle so the candles are they actually above all all three lines in this case yes they are actually at this moment above the three lines but you've got a bit of a correction that's happening and trying to actually touch perhaps it might just touch and and bounce back up again we never know maybe on the 50 maybe on the 100 which exponential moving average we don't know but it's, it's got a likelihood to do that okay to find reversal uh, there so if we compare that to the four hour chart as you can see you have got candles a little further up than the uh, that what we actually see on the one hour chart as you can see candles above all three lines but uh, here itself it's giving me a little bit of a hint that the um, the trend may not actually prolong for too long and the reason why I say that is based on the three lines here as you can see the three lines here they're entangled if they begin to touch each other and being tangled uh, between uh, amongst each other then this actually gives you a hint that that uptrend may actually be either pausing or correcting or something uh, you know that's not um, pushing it forward that fast and that easy to the upside okay that's what actually it means because here for example from a bigger perspective you're looking at many uh, higher lows and higher lows and higher highs as well so that gives us a, a bit of a hint of an uptrend type move actually so here if we go on to the one hour chart um, I'm just giving you an idea again you just have that um, uh, upper sort of uptrend type bias as well but then you've got a correction that's coming through but for our chart it's still giving you that indication of uh, a good run of an upward type trend but then you have got um, you've got a bit of a U type shape right here which in fact I've actually mentioned perhaps a bit of a cup type uh, handle but uh, I'm thinking more of a double top type uh, pattern as well because I don't really trade chart patterns alone. I, 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 I use a lot of Fibonacci to, um, you know, use a bit more harmonic style uh, pattern, but then I tweaked it to geometric uh, patterns as well. So here, for example, if you look to the left, I mean, looking left is really, really very important. Uh, once you look to the left, you could see that, you know, that that's an angle there to pay a bit of attention of a resistance zone. So if you want to draw a resistance type zone, never draw it if you could uh, with just one single line it's probably best uh, to draw two lines especially one on the highest 
if you're drawing a resistant type zone, one uh, single line on the highest body that you can actually see in that family of candles and then the highest sort of wick. So you've got two lines at least to the minimum uh, to actually confirm that. Um, low high um, infidel, maybe I probably made a mistake, but here AUD JPY, you've got higher lows, sorry, and higher highs. Yes, I think I've made that a uh, bit of a slip of tongue. Sorry about that. You've got higher lows and higher highs right there. But here, um, I don't actually really see a cup and handle uh, type pattern at this stage, mainly because um, a cup and handle type, uh, I would like to look at more on this area here, a sideway type train, and that have actually made that U, but uh, I don't see that. So it's probably a, a bit better to actually confirm a, um, not confirm, but uh, a bit higher in probability for a double top type pattern here. So here, as you can see, you know, it, it is actually heading downwards with a candle right there. But uh, in terms of price action, I would prefer for it to, um, you know, go under the, um, come under the uh, psychological number of 50. So if it's 83, uh, 50 and below, at least like 10 pips or so, then it can give you more uh, strength to the downside, like 83, 40 and below. Okay. So usually if, uh, as an example, if I were to sell uh, the AUD JPY thinking of selling you know wondering what a good price it could be it's never going to be at 83.50 on the dot 83.20 or 83.00 or 83.80 because these are all psychological levels so I would then if I would like to sell I would sell 10 pips under so if it's if the price now is 83 48, 49, it's closest to the 8350. So because it's 8350, that 50 number, you can actually then, uh, you know, deduct 10 pips from it. So 50 minus 10 gives you 40. So 8340 would be a better or a better ideal price to sell. Okay, so that's basically a way to use price action uh, on current pricing as well, uh, based on psychological numbers to uh, decide your entries as well as your exits. Okay, all right, there we go. Uh, we've got that coming downwards right here. I mean, as it comes downwards here, if you are, you know, um, wanting to be a seller and, uh, you know, you, you want to sell more of this and you're expecting for it to go lower, then you would be best or better off to look to the left as well. You know, take your time, scroll to the left and look for potential, I mean, previous buyers buying territory because these buying territory in the past could then be your hindrance uh, or what could pose as your risk. Uh, as a seller okay so here for example if we follow through to the left and looking at that current price itself and we drag the chart really slowly looking for areas that can actually be potential support areas you can then see that you have got some support area right here this one here is quite a significant one with really strong candles up for example and then you've got some more uh, area right here so what we can do is make use of these two spots here to actually draw a uh, support resistant uh, a support sorry zone so here I would draw a zone based on the lowest candle right here for example and also uh, the lowest uh, wick right here so now I've got that two lines representing a potential support uh, and it has encapsulated or included uh, this area here in the past too okay so uh, here we want to pay attention to this area. So how would I then decide whether or not I would like to, um, you know, take a sell type order and look at whether or not the downtrend has actually, um, you know, strengthened is to look at prices and after prices have actually gone under these two lines here because the, these two lines have now represented a significant support in the past. Okay. So if I go back, for example, to where prices are, um, I would not, uh, then um, participate in any you know transaction as of now because I would like to monitor price action and to look at whether or not I've got strong enough candle or strong enough momentum for prices to pierce through that blue zone right there because that blue zone uh, has been made up by two horizontal lines uh, based on significant support in the past. Okay, so that's really important. So we have got fundamentals to actually support it a little bit more, uh, perhaps on the downside, maybe AUD. Okay, especially for AUD versus the JPY. And what I would like to then do is to look at whether or not price could actually come under the 83.25 area. But once it goes to the 83.25 area, the 83. 
point 20 area is another area to look at because it's the psychological level so if at all prices were to come lower or create that selling momentum then it would probably be best to monitor and look at whether or not price could go under the 83.20 psychological level if it does then you've got more probability of a downward type move now the other challenges is that because i uh, would advise traders to be more risks focused as opposed to profit focused just to uh, sort of eliminate uh, as many risk levels as possible first okay because then the profit side of it would take care of it on its own so here for example if at all it does pierce through uh, and come under the 83.20 and below area, there is another risk whereby it might then find support at either one of the lines, you see. So this is entirely up to the trader uh, themselves, whether or not you want to start selling now, or you want to actually start selling only if it comes under that blue zone, or you would like to only start selling if it comes all the way down under and under all three lines and go lower, then you will start to actually sell so this is entirely um, dependent on your risk appetite as well okay and your style of trading and with the methodology or techniques that you actually use to set up your trades okay hope that actually makes sense now if I compare one hour with four hour um, it's still giving me that bias to the upside at this moment of time um, but it's also hinting me that that upside type move may not actually prolong for very long as I've mentioned mainly because of the three lines moving sort of sideways and tangled to each other so it's not really giving me um, you know a, a sort of long-term type uptrend bias or hint okay so if I go on to the D1 on the daily chart itself you could then see that uh, we are in a bit of a resistant type territory, okay? Mainly because if you look left here, you could see that it's quite a significant resistant area that has been sort of included in those lines that we've actually drawn as well. And then you could see that the current price right there is just stuck in between all three lines as well. So what I would like to see is more downward move only if um, it actually finds more resistance and come under that blue zone, then you've got a bit of a, um, on a daily chart, if that actually happens, uh, candles coming under the blue line, it gives you more a uh, hint to the downside uh, mainly because if you look left you've got a bit of a clear type area right here so that's a good sign on the daily chart as well so that actually means that uh, a fall could easily be a good nice free fall as well uh, for the AUD JPY for the long term perhaps medium to long mainly because we're seeing more clarity on the daily chart so perhaps this is showing that you know it wants to marinate more uh, news that would drive it to the downside and then give more clarity of the trend at this moment of time a, a little bit waiting is needed to find uh, whether or not it goes under the prices go under the psychological levels as well and then the trend start picking up and gives you clearer picture of a long-term type trend then you can actually take that trade in stages and ride on that trade okay all right and feel good yes we can definitely can look into gold as well um for those of you guys who are attending uh, today you know uh, feel free to also attend my live webinars we'll go through all the uh you know trade ideas for various uh patterns that i would pre-draw as well so the next one you guys can join me is next tuesday on fp markets um uh, platform as well uh, it'll be a uh, webinar sponsored by FP Markets. So I will be representing my uh, trade ideas based on geometric patterns as well on FP Markets uh, platform. Okay, good. So we can look at gold as well, definitely. Uh, let's just switch gear and go on to gold at this moment of time. Okay, now here, for example, we're looking at a uh, four hour chart, but let's just, uh, you know, we, we want to create a bit of a story when it comes to trend as well. So it's nice to actually look into the five minute chart first, you know, we want to look through and see that, you know, how prices have actually reacted. Where are the position of current candles? Current candles, as you can see, you know, we've got a bit of an entanglement of the three lines, as you can see. So the three lines, is, they are not moving downwards like the candles or moving upwards. They're just moving sideways. So that's not really a very clear trend indicator, mainly because, okay, you've got candles a little bit under here, but the three lines are just 
pointing sideways, okay, for gold versus the dollar. Now, as we move on to the 15 minutes chart, you can see that candles and prices, uh, current prices especially, they are in the middle of three lines. And look at the way the three lines are moving. They are moving sideways on its own. So what that, does that actually mean? That actually means that the current trend is actually quite uncertain based on the 15 minutes chart, mainly because you got prices in between all three lines as well. Yes, uh, it does actually depend on Fedora as well. If it's choppy, uh, it may actually be choppy creating the momentum of a range trading before it breaks out up or down. So this is why we want to actually follow the market from a lower type time frame and bring it upwards to look at whether or not the momentum is building up the trend to the upside or to the downside because we're not looking for strong trend we're looking at whether or not it is a strong to stronger trend whether it's upside or downside so if it is actually showing you hints of an upside now you want to go into a, um, a higher time frame and look at whether or not that upside time frame or that upscaled time time frame is showing you that the trend has actually moved upwards much more than the previous time frame Okay, so if I move on from 15 minutes to the 30 minutes, I could see that it may actually be building up or not, but it's very clear that it's still price still trapped at the moment in between three lines. So yes, it could be choppy sideways. Okay, uh, and it could actually be looking into what we call it a three o'clock type angle that actually communicates a bit of uncertainty, uncertainty of whether or not to break out upwards or downwards. Okay, that's on the 30 minutes chart. So what I usually do is that if I find that candles are in between three lines, I avoid I avoid drawing any patterns or any analysis based on that time frame, mainly because it's on a sideway consolidating type market. So um, I'm not a range trader, so I do patterns and patterns are best to be drawn on a momentum type uh, analysis. So I would then look for charts that would then reflect um, more momentum type. That actually means that I, I would like candles to be either above all three lines or under all three lines. Like in this case, it picked up a little bit, but it's still in between the three lines. But three lines is sort of not entangled that much anymore. It's actually separated from one another, pointing upwards. So this is giving you a hint that from the one hour chart onwards, there may actually be a pickup of trend to the upside. But I want to then compare whether or not my one hour and my four hour could actually match. Now in this case, it does actually match because then if you have actually gone onto the one hour chart, you could see that your candles or the current price, it's just right there bang on at the uh, one of the exponential moving average, the 50 exponential moving average. It's not actually above, but as you move to the four hour chart, you've got the candles moving slightly higher and has gone above all three lines. Okay, so it does actually depend, Fido, um, which time frame uh, you would need to or could actually potentially trade does actually depend on your equity level. So your equity level could then, your equity level and your goals uh, could then actually help you decide which time frame you can actually evaluate. Um, because what usually happens with traders is that if they've got $100 and they're looking into drawing patterns or drawing their analysis on a four hour or a daily, they might get then, you know, a little bit troubled or eaten up by the uh, volatile correction in the bigger time frame because the uh, capital itself or the, um, you know your capitalization does not actually support that kind of big moves in the bigger time frame so it's probably best for us to plan you know smaller capital smaller time frame a set of three time frames like 15 minutes 30 minutes and one hour to look at the match there and then you pick you know which time frame to draw out of that three time frames that you have actually um, chosen uh, based on your equity level, then you're looking into uh, picking one out of the three to actually start drawing. Depends on what which time frame offers you the clarity of the trend as well as various other elements that we can actually talk about uh, next week as well once we've actually gone into the trade plan side of things.
Okay, so here, for example, uh, weekly, I do agree with you as well, Infidel, is that it, it's got loads of data in it. So the higher time frame got higher and bigger amount of data in it. Uh, that is, of course, better if you see the match, let's say, of an uptrend on the four hour, on the daily, on the weekly and on the monthly as well. So that's actually a very good indication that uh, you've got a bit of a marathon type trend going on that can actually last and prolong longer. So if you've got more uptrend on bigger time frames that is actually a very good sign that you can take it in stages and write that trend for a reasonably long time that's what it actually means okay all right so we've got that upward type momentum building up from one hour chart uh, now it's four hour chart is building up again now you, you see that clarity there you've got that three um lines pointing upwards very nicely showing you that there are signs of an upward type pickup of momentum for gold okay on the four hour chart let's match that four hour with the daily chart now as we go on the daily chart that tells you again on the longer term the day based on the daily chart you've got more momentum mainly because a momentum to the upside now because it's got more momentum to the upside it does actually uh, it's a good sign, you know, to look into upward type movements, of course, because, you know, the three lines pointing up, candles are above all three lines, but you need to also look left. Um, when you look left, you're looking at whether or not you could be taken out, whether or not you've got some obstacles along the way. Now, if you're looking at an upward type move, you're a buyer, and as a buyer, you want to look to the left for um, all the previous significant sellers. So here, I, uh, based on the price now itself, Look at this zone here. This is quite a risky type zone because price is at a zone where prices for gold has actually dropped. So what you can then do is to draw a line on the wick, okay? And also you're supposed to draw a line on the uh, highest body, but then the price is exactly on the highest body uh, of the price there of a, um, uh, how you call that, the opening price of the downward type movement. So that, that was quite a significant type move. And current price is exactly on where majority of traders in the past have actually sold. So this is a very, very important zone uh, to actually watch out for, but not to enter your trade at this moment of time. Okay, so uh, we would like to then look into prices um, you know, to, to, to short it and sell only after it's actually gone uh, under this all these zones here. So if I were to, uh, base on this family of candle right here, I've got one uh, line right there that is actually on the highest, uh, what do you call that, body of the candle. But that highest body of the candle coincide very nicely with the highest wick of the candles in this family of candles, okay? And these, these are all messages that to, to take into account that you are in a quite um, significant resistant type zone at this moment of time okay so it depends on your strategy as well if you're looking to shorting it and things like that uh, so here for example i've got the body right here okay and that body right here the highest body of these family of candles suddenly coincide exactly here you see so there's a lot of coincidentals and they are not only coincidentals they're actually price memory spots which actually you know previous big buyers sellers have actually sort of um, reserved their seat at these spots to actually sell so you want to be very very careful uh, when you look to the left um, you know you want to look at what they've actually done before could easily be what they could do now or even vice versa so hence the reason we want to lay out all these lines and things like that and know that it's probably best for us to wait until prices go lower than especially this area right here because that was a significant type uh you know a, a very significant drop of price of gold okay hopefully that actually makes a bit of sense for you guys okay i uh, hope i'm not uh, speaking too fast as well you see the the best thing about this looking left uh kind of thing is that you know you, you're finding synchronicity as well uh, or coincidences, or you could call it, uh, you know, um, correlations. Because if you're looking into, uh, you see, that selling zone right there is exactly on where price is at now. And if you look left, you've got various other resistance as well. And there's just far too many resistance that's been going on in this area of price. So that does actually then hint us that, okay, this could actually be 
uh, an area to watch out for. Now, if I draw another area right here based on this family of candle, highest body, which is that one there, and then I've got my highest wick, which is right there, that now builds up a sort of zone for me as well uh, to actually watch out for this entire zone. Now, this entire zone could easily be my resistant type zone, so I would then be a little bit, I would say, feel a little safer in shorting or selling only after gold has actually gone under that blue zone area. So I'm just keeping it a little bit safe. Now, uh, the other thing as well is that I'm not really that confident of a sell order even after it's actually gone under that blue zone, mainly because it might then find support as well at either one of these lines. So it's a little bit choppy in terms of decision making as well and it's not giving me that clarity so because the market itself is looking like it's in doubt i basically as a trader would prefer to stay out that's as easy as that okay all right there you go guys i hope that's been clear for you guys and uh you know um because it's got lots of obstacles on the on the resistance side for gold you know perhaps you want to look at uh lower time frame and look at clearer sort of angle to actually enter uh, your trade uh, with the uh, 15 minutes chart for example you know it's just all in within the zone right here it's just not giving me clarity of trend mainly because candles are in between trading in between all three lines as well and that's basically what is preventing me from taking any trades as well for a goal at the moment whether it's a 15 30 or one hour mainly because of the positioning of the candles they're just not giving me clarity so uh, no clarity meaning that uh, the chances of me looking at a good formation of candles, a formation of pattern as well, is not that clear. And it's not going to be high probability, low risk type pattern anyway, if I'm actually looking for patterns at this condition of the market. Okay, this moment for gold. Okay, there you go, guys. I think, um, yeah, we, we're almost running out of time here, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be... Happy to take questions uh, from you guys. Have you guys got any other questions? I hope I, you know, we've uh, sort of covered some things about fundamental analysis. Hope you guys get a bit of an idea. Um, and uh, what will be really interesting is next week's course and next week's uh, session, whereby we'll put all things together. I'll uh, pre-draw uh, some geometric patterns and um, you know uh, teach you guys on how to spot patterns, draw patterns. But before that, how do we actually choose the right pair to trade? And we go on to step one, step two, right up to step five of the PRICE or price trade plan, so that you can then get an idea of what you do need to do at the you know at the very beginning and how you can match it all up to get gather up information in order to practically trade but best of all to look for high probability low risk trade ideas that you can practically follow and trade it okay all right hope that makes sense guys okay um questions guys i am opening the floor now to you and you guys are now uh in charge of questions and uh, yeah, if you got questions, guys, feel free. Don't be shy. Yep. Any questions at all? Any questions on your current trade? Perhaps some difficulties, some sort of challenges, or something that's not been clear as well. USD. <laughs> Just a question mark. <laughs> USD CHF. Sure. Let, let's look into it uh, from a an article uh, sort of point of view. Okay. Uh, USD CHF. That is. Is that correct? That's, uh, you know, because for me, you know, um, the, the market is just moving really fast and whatever trend as well could actually evolve, change, continue or reverse at any moment of time. And we just need to trust our eyes, do a little bit of a trend analysis first. OK, so here, for example, we can do the same uh, start off uh, right there. Uh, and you can actually see uh, straight away on a one hour chart, for example, you've got a bit of a clear indication of an upward type momentum that has actually happened. But you're looking at some correction coming downwards at this moment of time, uh, touching that 50 exponential moving average. So if I go onto the four hour chart, I can see that um, the market has taken or lifted up the candles a little bit higher as well. So that actually gives me an idea that uh, USDCHF has still got some oomph in the upside or momentum on the bullish side of things. And we've got that uh, higher lows, we've got a higher highs as well. And you've, uh, as you can notice here itself, you've got the concentration of candles 
on the support area uh, has actually been encouraged or pushed up by the either one of the exponential moving average as you can see right here pushed up by the 200 moving uh, sorry 100 moving average right there the 150 exponential moving average right there has actually acted as a support this one here is acted as support by the 200 exponential moving average uh, the 100 exponential moving average and then you've got some more support here really strong ones from the 200 uh, exponential moving average so you can see that wave has actually been created right there now um, and if we go on to the daily chart you can see again um, it's um, a little above uh, the the uh, three lines but now as as we go into the daily chart suddenly we find that uh, there may actually be a bit of a slowdown in the uptrend mainly because of the way the three lines are actually moving sideways you see so okay you can actually look into uh, lower time frames 15 minutes let's say and you go into the 15 minutes chart you can see that it's unpredictable uh, right there because you got candles in between all the three lines and uh, you know uh, you got candles coming downwards but then the the, the three lines are sort of uh, an upward type tilt as well so you've got a bit of a mismatch between the trend and the positioning of the candle so it's not a good time frame to look at for the 15 minute chart and if we go on to um, what would you call that 30 minutes charts the same it's just not clear so I, I I would ignore the 15 minutes the 5 the 15 the 30 at this moment of time mainly because uh, it's unpredictable uh, it's in doubt at the moment the market so when it's in doubt I best stay out of these time frames as well uh, and I'm looking for clarity of the time frame itself so if it's more clear on the four hour then I'll pay more attention to a clear time frame in terms of the trend so the trend on the one hour at this moment of time is just entering into the unpredictability zone as well the uncertainty zone as well which is in between the three lines so it's touching that uh, the, the uh, one of the exponential moving average right there as you can see and then it's just you know not really giving me that hint of a upward type bounce as yet so we have to wait until uh, you know uh, wait for it to happen now looking looking to the right itself you're looking at prices at 9668 okay so if we are looking into more upward type momentum then we want to look at a more price going above the 9680 and above then we can see that upward type momentum if not we're just you know not really certain at this stage uh, so it's really important for us to be really careful now looking right looking at the current price looking at you know your psychological numbers as well uh, to the bottom to the top if I were to draw two level psychological levels uh, let's say 9668 um, right below it the closest psychological number is your 9650 okay so if I were to draw um, that line the horizontal line at 9650 that's one um, one level that I need to watch out for okay now above the current price the closest psychological number is 9680 okay so I'll just mark that as well uh, what I would like to do is when I draw these two lines the horizontal lines I would then make them act as the bread to the sandwich you know so uh, I've got the price sandwich in between two psychological levels the 9680 and the 9650 so that itself uh, using the psychological numbers itself with these two lines can act as a zone or um, you know your reversal uh, sort of zone or the zone that you shouldn't be looking into trading as well mainly because it's at a very sensitive type zone uh, to trade because it could reverse or you know just act choppy and go sideways as well at this area right here that I've actually shaded uh, in blue so um, if at all you're looking into a downward type momentum based on the four hour chart then only after uh, candles or prices have actually gone under that blue zone then to be a conservative trader to know okay I would like to you know enter a sell uh, type order and would like to write the uh, downtrend type move then it would probably be best for you to then consider it coming down lower not only under the blue zone but under all three lines as well so uh, that is a little bit you know more challenging having more obstacles for it to actually come down because imagine if the whole trend were to change to the downside it needed it needs to actually break through that first layer of the 50 exponential moving average then the second layer there and then the third layer and then come down you see so it's a long way through to change that whole trend to a downtrend for the usdchf so uh, it is actually looking like even if it does actually pierce through and break downwards um, 
under that blue zone it might then find support at any one of these lines as well okay so that's just my insight on the usd chf and the four hours uh, four hour chart um yes it could potentially be a channel um i would guess that you're talking about an upward type channel uh it is potential yes definitely um, the other way of looking at it as well is uh, from a patterns perspective, uh, I like it when it actually bounces from here. So if it bounces from here, let's say I take that through right up as my first line A, A to B. And if I were to buy, then I would then predict that A to B to be, um, to be quite similar to the C to D's length. So I've got uh, something in mathematics that we call it uh, uh, parallels or symmetry. So once you've got a symmetry like that, then that could... Uh, uh, symmetry could easily, you know, sort of uh, with, with certain price points, you could then make out a shape and that geometric shape would then come out and look like this. So here, for example, that, that edge there is where I would then uh, sort of predict or forecast the reversal. And that was exactly where it has actually begun to reverse when I took that upward type movement to the upside. So I would then you know, have actually bought for the USDCHF at above that central center point area right there where the two lines have actually intersected. And I've bought there and basically taken profit under that line right there or just, uh, you know, at, at a, at a uh, good price, basically, meaning before the 96.80. So 96, 96.70, I, I've actually exited, I've actually entered at 96.30. So 96.30, 96.70, about 40 pips. That was a nice 40 pips right there, actually. So um, yeah, that's just to give you a bit of an idea how that geometric pattern has actually been, you know, um, spotted right there and traded as well. So uh, we'll go over all that next week, uh, the fourth part uh, of the course, by you know having all pre-drawn patterns as well, so I can share with you guys trade ideas. So do not miss out uh, next. Uh, weeks um very interesting course it will be a, a trade idea sharing as well uh, on pre-drawn patterns as well as uh, going over the various steps that made out or makes out that uh, price trade plan okay um at this moment of time i mean we are looking at um i mean what you're talking about in federal is if you're looking at shorting that actually means that uh, you are also a um uh, not re, not a not a uh, hundred percent trend trader. So that may actually be uh, you know some some techniques that you may have to do that uh, with patterns trading. Um, basically, we just follow the trend. So what we are actually waiting is for another ABCD to actually form uh, to then ride it again to the upside. So uh, we're more trend followers at this moment of time. So uh, no, I'm not looking at shorting at this moment of time. Yeah. Um, yes, that's correct. Uh, below insight level, no, actually, if it is, if, if I have entered earlier, I would have entered at 96, uh, 30, right? Mainly because, uh, the price at the cross point is very close to the 96, 20 psychological number. So I wouldn't actually buy at 96, 20. If I would like to buy, I would buy 10 pips above the psychological number. If you want to sell, then you sell 10 pips under the psychological number, you see? So if I actually uh, buy 96, uh, 96, 30, then uh, it projected the price right there, the end, the D point right here at 96, 89. So 96.89 is um, closest to 96.80. So you need to exit before 10 pips before it hits the 80 psychological number. So 80, 80 is your psychological uh, level. 10 pips before 80 is 80 minus 10, so 70. So 96.70 is where it would be ideal to exit the price. Okay, hope that makes sense. Sen, yeah. 96.70, you've got it right actually, yeah. That is correct. You've got it all right. Yeah, good. Okay, guys, I think that's all I have uh, for you guys. I, I hope this has been a uh, interesting session for you guys as well. Um, I just want to share one thing before I go, though, because, uh, you know, um, just realize that you've got the bigger pattern. Uh, small pattern is within a big pattern. So I just want to draw that. So if I actually... Um, do one here like let's say i've got an a right here 
and then a B right there, yeah? If I take that AB equals CD, then it's projecting some more move uh, to the upside right there, okay? So that is another hint as well because you, you could actually amalgamate or connect one big pattern to another pattern, whether it's smaller or bigger, and then so on and so forth. So uh, you will see a continuation of pattern to pattern to pattern. And if you are actually at the right side of the trend, you can literally uh, you know, ride along many, many patterns uh, as well. So as you can see, you've got an A here, B here, C, and then another D right there. So again, A here, and then B here, and then C, and then another D right there. So we've got various, various um, sort of uh, patterns is you've got A to B right there and then you, you just double click that, bring that over, you've got that exactly at that point right there as well, okay? Then if you've got another one here for example and you're drawing that A to B right there, you're taking that through right there and that's just around areas that it has actually reversed as well, okay? So uh, that's basically it just to give you a bit of an idea. Uh, where is the long? Um, at this moment of time, we're just looking at, you know, uh, not really looking at the long as yet. We're looking at the correction first. So that actually means that I'm waiting for the correction to happen at either one of this exponential moving average. So then I could draw an A, B, a C. And the C would actually then be either one of this line. And then I'll take that through. But I would then enter it only at the cross point of that pattern. But now it's just too early to draw a pattern because it just hasn't actually formed as yet. Okay. To join me on Tuesday, we'll do live market analysis based on mar live market environment. And... Um, and we'll draw patterns that are live and you can check that out for yourself as well, how it progresses throughout the day. And uh, you can always join my Telegram group as well. And, and uh, you know, you can go on to um, www.fxgeometry.com. Um, we are working in collaboration with uh, FP Markets uh, in, in the um, uh, training and education side of things. So feel free to go on to www, I'll just type, type it right here, if that's okay. And you can see there's a Telegram group right there. Do join the Telegram group and, uh, you know, you can ask questions there as well. Okay. Let me just type that. Okay. fxgeometry.com. Okay. And on the right panel, you can find the join the Telegram group. Uh, and just click on there and it'll bring you straight into the Telegram group. We share, you know, trade ideas. Uh, I've got a couple of hundred people in the group and uh, feel free to make friends uh, and, you know, and enjoy the uh, shared trade ideas, signals and various others. And you can ask me directly questions as well about what's not really clear as well. And uh, feel free to ask and share and trade. Okay. All right, guys, I think that's it. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, say a very big thank you for spending your time with me today, joining my webinar. Um, hope you join me the next time as well. Uh, Tuesday is when I'll be doing the Live Market Outlook webinar um, at the same time as well uh, for, uh, for FP Markets. And uh, on Thursday, we'll be doing the... Um, the course part of the course but the last session of the course uh, as well part four okay guys all right good um again thank you very much guys uh, have a lovely evening uh take care and see you again very soon bye bye for now